My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. America. Other people make friends, and they're trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you, so call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Last night, last night I told you not to overthink the run in the COVID stocks. Sometimes the market rallies and it makes perfect sense. But then there are days like today when I can't take how stupidly bullish this market can be. The Dow gaining 164 points, S&P advancing 0.36%, NASDAQ climbing 0.35%. Now, you often hear people complain that the whole thing is being manipulated. Do you ever look at my Twitter file? It's like the manipulation company. Uh, it, it, and why is it being manipulated? Well, it's a, it's a desperate Federal Reserve. It's, it's a scared Jay Powell. Uh, it's President Trump wanting to win the election. No, no. Fed's just doing his job. And if the White House really wanted to juice the stock market going to the election, well, don't you think they already want to cut a deal with the Democrats in the next round of stimulus? See, there's a much more simpler explanation for a lot of what happened underneath it today. I call it clueless buying. I always say you should never underestimate the Wall Street promotion machine, but there's a corollary to that. Never underestimate the power of enthusiastic buyers who do not know what they're doing. Bye, bye, bye. They know nothing. They know nothing. They know nothing. Some people accuse me of taking the Jimmy Chill thing too far. They say I'm not willing to call people out for being morons. Uh, that I'm more likely to put retiring Clorox CEO Ben O'Dor on the wall of fame than I am to put Ford's departing CEO, <laughs> sorry, Jim Hackett, on the wall of shame. They think I've become some sort of Dalai Lama disciple, four agreements guy, maybe a Wall Street conscientious objector. Thirteen years ago yesterday, I screamed that the Fed knew nothing. They know nothing! As we were heading into the Great Recession. What happened to that, Kramer? Well, I don't know what to tell you. The Fed was totally clueless in 2007, but in 2020, they've been ahead of the curve every step of the way. Jay Powell, he may not be an epidemiologist, though he often plays one at the meetings where other Fed governors want to engage in wishful thinking about how we're almost out of the COVID woods. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, at least he knows. He knew ahead of time. Got to hand it to him. How, as opposed to the other guys last time, 2007, how about our elected leaders? Look, it's absolutely insane that Congress hasn't passed another stimulus package, that they let the expanded jobless benefits lapse, that there appears to be no strategy or no plan. But that's politics in America. And at a certain point, yelling about this stuff is like bashing your head against the wall. No, thank you. I like my head. So today I'm reserving my wrath for the know-nothing buyers who seem to have taken a permanent intellectual summer vacation. I can't influence the Fed, and I can't. I, I, I don't have a lot of heft in Congress. I know you think I do. But maybe, just maybe, I can berate some ignorant traders into managing their money more responsibly. And that's tonight's object lesson. So I want to start Sorrento Therapeutics. You might have seen, might have seen them on Closing Bell. Sorrento Therapeutics is a company I've championed repeatedly since June when the stock was trading at $4. And management told us how they were working on both a treatment for COVID and a prophylactic, which I had thought was something else before I started getting involved with this COVID thing. I recommended it again several weeks ago when the stock was 8 bucks, and the company told us they were making a ton of progress. I told you Sorrento had many shots on goal. You might have thought I was talking about some city in Italy where uh, Enrico Caruso used to hang out. No, I said it had many shots on goal, that it was exactly the kind of COVID drug stock that you should be speculating on. Well, I, I'd been skeptical myself, though. I called Meg Terrell, our bu- terrific biotech expert, to be sure I wasn't off track. And then I listened to Dr. Henry G., the chairman and CEO, who told a terrific story. Sure enough, last Wednesday, now not tomorrow, because that wouldn't be last. That'd be tomorrow. Last Wednesday, Sorrento announced it's licensing a rapid on-site COVID detection test using the saliva from Columbia University, good school, that gives you a result in 30 minutes or less. Their test doesn't need to be shipped to a reference lab, which is, by the way, Mr. President, is the big bottleneck in the country. You're letting them get away with it. And it also has to be very accurate. Sorrento's marketing it under the name COVID Trace, and you can potentially take the test at home one day. The whole thing's in a single tube. Oh, and no swab up your nose. You know, when they jam it up your nose, you may not realize. First, they tell you it's going to be 10 seconds, but it's really 12. And it's really one of those one Mississippi, two Mississippi jobs. Ah! Anyway, when I saw the news, I told my wife about it. Lisa is her name. And we're finally going to get out of this mess because Sorrento figured it out. Then she told me she always wanted to go to Sorrento. But that was apropos of absolutely nothing. 
No, I said, I'm talking about Sorrento Therapeutics. But the stock at eight, and she of course, what she says, she goes, we couldn't go to Sorrento anyway. We're not allowed to go to Italy. But she didn't get it. See, Sorrento was at $8 and change. It did nothing on the, on the release. Nothing. No reaction. So either the market was being very stupid or something, well, let's say someone knew something. Maybe Sorrento was being too promotional, Moderna-like. Maybe there was a problem we didn't know about. Turns out the market was just stupid. Because today, on the exact same news, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. On the exact same news from last Wednesday, Sorrento rallied 31% to just under 13 The stock market is supposed to be efficient, but somehow it took Wall Street six days to process this news. If anyone ever says to you that the market's pricing information correctly and instantly, you are now, fe- you are now free to call those people mailbox and knaves especially if they're professors at colleges. Or how about this? On July 23rd, we learned that Intel, yeah, Intel, was having problems manufacturing their new 7 nanometer transistor, which is supposed to be the holy grail for everyone involved in tech hardware, the server, the server kings. Anyone who follows the industry was shocked that this once great chip maker was actually struggling. Even as advanced micro devices, the perennial underdog is ready to go that with its 7, 7 nanometer, thanks to its partnership with Taiwan Semiconductor. Intel's pain is AMD's game. They could take a massive amount of market share. I thought this story was huge, and I pushed AMD aggressively on you. I mean, just hard as I could, arguing that the quarter would also be good. In a matter of days, the stock falls from 59 to 77. So far, so good. But today, today, Jefferies, a research firm, puts out a note. It's titled, Advanced Micro Devices Expect Share Gains to Accelerate, end quote. Now, there's nothing new in this piece, nothing that I haven't told you. They're simply reiterating what was said back on July 23rd. I didn't think it was even worth mentioning on Squawk on the Street. Wrong. AMD rallied 9.5% today on that non-news. The same darn info I gave you. When I checked around, all I heard was that the stock was being re-rated. Wall Street speak for, boy, were we wrong about this $100 billion business. Let's go buy some. Now, I love AMD. You know that. Oh, come on. I wear it on my sleeves. Uh, but uh, you could have easily gotten in, 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 into this one in the mid-60s on the same news a week and a half ago. Frankly, I've been recommending this stock since it was trading at $5. When CEO Lisa Su schooled me about how her company had a roadmap that would allow them to beat Intel. And it sure did. Finally, maybe the dumbest action of the year is this run in BP today. Yeah, the old British Petroleum. Think Macondo. Back in February, BP raised its dividend by 2.4%. Raised, okay, you hear me? February, raised. Making the case that the world of oil was getting better and better, and they wanted to return money to shareholders because things were so rosy. So what happened when they boosted that dividend? The stock immediately flew up almost 5% pre-pandemic. Today, the company announces a record loss, pronounces its prospects incredibly grim, offers to pivot to lower carbon. It's an oil company. And cuts the dividend in half. Not only are they telling you business is terrible, uh, BP is trying to distance itself from crude while preserving cash, but maybe that dividend hike was a mistake. All right, so how much was that stock down? I mean, wow, what a, what a parade of horrors. Are you kidding me? BP stock rallied 7.5%. That's a bigger gain than when they got, they got in February when they told you business was great and they raised the dividend. Stupid is as stupid does. And I also didn't know. It turns out the big buyer today was someone by the name of Navin Johnson. The bottom line, sometimes the stock market roars and makes perfect sense. But there's also plenty of stupidity especially during earnings season when there's so much news that it's hard to keep track of what's going on. So the next time you see something totally crazy, it might not, well, it's not going to be the Fed. It might not be the president. It may just be standard garden variety idiocy. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.